Okay, let's see how your order of operation skills are. And we're going to go ahead and tackle this problem. Now, of course, I want you to go ahead and try. That's the whole point. I obviously know how to do it. Uh, I want to see if you know how to do it, right? Uh, but uh, the topic is, again, order of operations. Order of operations. I'm going to talk a little bit about this, but a lot of you would uh, know this as that acronym PEMDAS. And it, there's another kind of little saying that goes uh, with that. That's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So PEMDAS, yeah, I'm sure people were saying that even probably back in the 1940s, if you will. I don't know the history of that particular phrase, but I, I'm pretty sure I was saying that phrase back in uh, the late 70s, 80s or whatnot. Uh, maybe some of you know uh, another phrase for that, but that's a pretty common one. But anyways, we're talking about order of operations and Order of operations is one of these areas in mathematics that students, um, uh, many students are overconfident in. They think they know the order of operations really, really well, but in fact, they don't know uh, uh, the order of operations as well as they think to, and it leads to many errors, okay? So I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about that, and obviously we're going to tackle this problem. But again, uh, to make the most use of this video, you want to pause the video and try uh, pause, yeah, pause the video and then try this, and then obviously get your answer. And then we'll go through it together. Okay, so we're going to get to this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. Uh, but I have a, uh, a lot of specialty uh, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're preparing for a test like the GED, HiSET, TASC, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, Alex, CLEP. Um, there's a ton of uh, courses out there that people take, maybe a teacher certification, uh, a nursing entrance exam. There's a lot of reason um, people study mathematics outside of a math course. You may not be in a math course, but you're studying math. Go to my site, check out my cor uh, course catalog. I have great test preparation math courses. Uh, so if I don't have your course, drop me a line and I'll see what I can to help you do, uh, see what I can do to help you out. I also uh, work a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system. And then I obviously help those of you that are just struggling in mathematics. Don't worry. Uh, if you like my teaching style, you'll love my uh, math help program. But the one thing that you need to do for yourself in order to improve in math. And I would you know, I suspect that you're interested in getting better at math if you're watching this video. But the real secret to being excellent in mathematics is taking great math notes. So over decades of teaching math, I've just seen the pattern time and time again. Those students who have fantastic math notes almost always get great math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who like to talk to their buddies in their class like I did, or maybe they have their like uh, best friend or like, you know, he, uh, my best friend takes great notes. I just take their notes to study from. Or maybe you'd like to look at your cell phone during class. Listen, I made all those mistakes, but I also paid a price for that. If you do those things, you're not going to do well in math. And then people wonder why they look like this at the end of the year and it, you know, they don't like the math grade. I'm like, what happened? What happened? Well, what happened was, I can almost guarantee you, uh, most of you, did not take great notes, okay, or structure notes. Or if you did take notes, you're like, yeah, I'm taking notes. They look like this, kind of like my notes did. And then I looked at my notes, and I'm like, what did I write down? I have no idea. So they're kind of useless. So that's why the only real notes that are going to be of value are fantastic math notes, something that you could actually, like, publish. I've actually had students who had better notes than me, which is really impressive. And these were, you know, so, again, if you're having difficulty in mathematics, focus on your note-taking. It's absolute must. But uh, as you are improving, I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get to this problem, order of operations. This is stuff that you start learning uh, probably uh, in elementary school a little bit, certainly in middle school for sure. Um, and it's a prerequisite kind of uh, skill for algebra. You just got to know how to do this. Again, very, very um, common for students to make uh, mistakes with the order of operations. So let's just quickly review it, and then we'll um, do this problem. Okay, so we have PEMDAS, P, 
E-M-D-A-S. So what does that stand for? Well, let's actually rewrite this. So we'll write it this way. Okay. P-E-M-D-A-S. Because this is kind of like the order we're kind of thinking to do things. So the first thing, this P is parentheses. Okay, we're going to do what's inside parentheses. So if something has multiple parentheses like this and then another set of parentheses like that, you want to work from the innermost parentheses. Now, these parentheses, this P is really grouping symbols. So other grouping symbols that you might be familiar with are brackets and then these little squiggly brackets like this. These are grouping symbols. That's what that P really means. Okay, let's go to our next thing. So this is our first thing that we want to do. Our next thing is E. That stands for exponents, effectively powers. So let's just write this down here, power. So we have like two to the fifth power, okay, this is an E, okay, so you need to know how to interpret something like two to the fifth power, which means what? Two times itself five times, right? So one, two, three, four, five, okay, this is two to the fifth power, which uh, of course would be 32. Okay, so that's what E is. Now, here is where I would say uh, this step right here is what gives so many students confusion. Okay, and then we're going to see this purposely in this problem here in a second. So what most people think is you have to do M stands for multiplication, right? And D stands for division, right? So most people think you must always, always, always do multiplication before division because it says PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S. So you must do M's before D's, right? This is not correct. So let's write it this way, P-E-M-D-A-S. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to go from left to right. And what you're going to do, M and D are actually kind of like one step together. You're going to do multiplication or division, whatever comes first from left to right. So if you have PEM, if you have multiplication before division from left to right in your problem, then you do the M. Okay, but if you have PEDM, a S. Okay. Again, this is like one step you can, or you need to do division before multiplication. If division, um, is before multiplication going from left to right in the problem, you got to pay very, very close attention to this. And then our last two steps is addition and subtraction. And the same thing applies from left to right. But I would say that so many mistakes are made over here. Okay. This is a classic uh, spot for trouble for a lot of students. So that's why, you know, math teachers like myself, we get a little sneaky, we throw it in to see if you really kind of understand that. So let's get to our problem now. Um, now, before we get to our problem, uh, if you think you know what you're doing, you're like, okay, I got this now. I feel good about it. Let me show you the problem again before I show you the solution. Okay. If you think you can do it, pause the video and, you know, go ahead and tackle it. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the problem. We kind of just pre-did it here uh, just to save some time. Okay, so here I have two sets of parentheses, okay? I have this parenthesis, this parenthesis. My eyes are drawn for parentheses because P is first. So I got to do what's inside the innermost parentheses first, okay? So this is like one problem. I got to get this down to like one number. And then I'll keep expanding out from there and deal with what's uh, in the other sets of outer parentheses. So my eyes are drawn to what's inside the first set of parentheses, and I'm looking around. I got 10 minus, all right, I have a subtraction here, but I see I have division, so this is subtraction. I have division, I have multiplication, and then I have addition. So, you know, thinking about PEMDAS, all right, or let's just put a little PEMDAS right here, P-E-M, uh, P-E-M-D-A-S, I'm like, okay, I'm in the first set of parentheses. I'm looking at the E. Is there any powers here? No, there's no power, so I don't have to worry about that E. So now I'm focused on M and D. I do see A and S, addition and subtraction, but I have multiplication and division, so I'm focused here. So I'm looking, I'm like, what comes first? Well, this is division. Well, this is 12 divided by 3. Uh, so just think about this. If I got, I could do this problem. I could do this situation one of two ways, the right way or the wrong way. I can go 12 divided by 3, which is 4, or I can go 3 times 4, which is 12. So I would end up with 12 divided by 12, which is incorrect. 
but if you were stuck on, oh, I must do M before D with PEMDAS, you, this is a classic place where students would make mistakes. Okay, so again, we got to do whatever comes first from left to right. Division comes first, so we're going to have to do this uh, problem here. 12 divided by 3, which of course is what? That is 4. Okay, so what's our problem now? It's 10. This right here is 4, so we have 10 minus 4 times this 4 plus 1. Okay, you re always rewrite these steps just like I'm doing right here. If you're doing this problem, your work should look like mine, okay? At least you'll want to strive to make it uh, look and just show all the steps here because if you make a little error, you know, your teacher can be like, oh, you made a mistake right there, but everything else looks pretty good. They'll give you partial credit. Most students will, uh, sorry, most teachers will give you partial credit, but if you're just like scribble scratch, here's my answer, you know, they're just going to like, you know, uh, be like, here, here, in return, here's a nice zero for your effort. You don't want that situation. That's not fun. Okay, so now at this point, again, I've still got work to do in my first sense, uh, first set of parentheses. So here I have subtraction, addition, multiplication. It's pretty clear. I got to do the multiplication now, right? And so with PEMDAS here, let's leave it up here, P E M. Uh, D A S. Okay, so I got to deal with that multiplication here. So 10 minus 4 times 4, of course, is 16. Okay, so we'll write our answer there plus 1. Okay, at this point, I've still got work to do inside of the parentheses. So I got to go now from left to right. Uh, I'm left with addition and subtraction. So again, addition and subtraction, you do what comes first from left to right. So I got to deal with subtraction here. I got to deal with this. Now, technically, uh, this is uh, with addition and subtraction, uh, you'll you get the right answer no matter what. But let's just go ahead and just follow the order here. So 10 minus 16. Again, you need to know uh, some other th uh, skills here that I kind of failed to mention. You got to know your positive and negative numbers for this particular problem. I could give you a more basic problem where you know that wouldn't have been the case. But you know, at this level of math, let's say pre-algebra, eighth grade you know, algebra one for sure, you should have already uh, mastered or learned those positive and negative numbers. And if you haven't, no panic, um, no panic. And you can just check out, uh, I have tons of videos on the rules for positive and negative numbers in my pre-algebra and algebra one playlist. But all of this, if you really, really want to learn this stuff, you know, I would say like my pre-algebra course would be excellent or my algebra one course. Okay, so let's continue on. So 10 minus uh, 16 or plus a negative 16 is negative 6. Okay, so that's the answer right there. But I still have to deal with this plus 1. Okay, now notice I'm not doing this all in one shot. I'm not just getting one answer here because I want to, you know, break down this problem nice and easy so you can see every single step. But I'm still focused on this inner parenthesis. I'm not done with this step here. Okay, still focus on uh, getting this down to one value. So we have negative 6 plus 1 is going to be negative 5. Now, at this point in the problem, okay, if I have just a number inside parentheses, then I can kind of technically drop the parentheses, okay? There's not a reason to have them. There's nothing to do, okay? So now I'm dealing with my outer parentheses right here, all right? So this is what I got to continue. I got to focus on uh, the next set of parentheses. So negative 5 minus 7 or plus a negative 7 will give me a, a negative 12. Hopefully, uh, those of you out there know that and you're up to speed on your positive and negative numbers. Okay, so uh, negative 5 plus uh, negative 7 is negative 12. Okay, now I have this plus 9, so I just got to figure that out. And our final answer is negative 3. Okay, so if you got this problem right, I think you deserve... A big smiley face with a little mohawk, uh, an A plus, and a 100%. And let's just give you one star. We don't want you to get too overconfident uh, in terms of your ability to work with order of operations. But this is a good, you know, really good start. You know, if I really wanted to make this uh, interesting, we could throw some positive and negative fractions in there. You know, three and one half. Mix them. Uh, put some decimals in there. You know, they really kind of make these problems more interesting, but that's for later, okay? The main thing is that you understand how to use PEMDAS correctly, okay? So, again, a lot of students think they know this better than they do. Now, if you just did this problem without even listening to me and you just said, oh, hey, I got the right answer, and 
you know, that's great too, but you might have gotten lucky, okay, in terms of uh, choosing to do this step versus doing this step. So it's just been my um, experience, and I'm talking about decades of experience, and I don't know how many uh, quizzes and tests and homework I've graded over the years, maybe hundreds of thousands. I have, I lost track. But you see trends, okay? And I'm just telling you right now, be on the lookout. When you're doing order of operation problems, be on the lookout, okay, for these little errors. And the way to really uh, minimize errors is to, you know, show nice, neat, structured work. And how do you do that? Well, one, you got to model your teacher. If your teacher's laying out example problems like this, hopefully they are. Okay, but two, you got to write this down in your notes. All this stuff I'm talking about note taking, you might like, hey, he's just talking about notes. Listen, I'm telling you right now, you you have to practice good habits. Okay, if you, you know, write math and do scribble scratch, you're that's you're actually hurting yourself. I'd rather you not even do math. Be like, yeah, go play Xbox or whatever you're gonna do. <laughs> Don't do math. If you're gonna do math poorly, you're better off not doing it because what you're doing is creating bad habits that you're gonna have to unwind to learn good habits. I'd rather you just like not do anything, um, and then when you're ready to learn, do things correctly, okay? That's the whole idea. That's how you get better at stuff, not just math, anything. Okay, so hopefully, you know, we can erase this sad face guy. I kind of think I uh, made my point. If you uh, felt like, mm, you know what, yeah, it was worth watching this video, okay, I feel a little bit better about my order of operations, or like I knew that, I knew that, uh, you know, I didn't really learn anything. Either way, you know, if you enjoyed this video in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. Have hundreds and hundreds of videos organized from basic to advanced math on my channel. All there for you. And I'm posting new stuff all the time. But my best uh, help, uh, best instruction will be found in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.